I've been saying for a long time now, what what is the deal with General Motors and Mary Barra? Now, Mary Barra promised more than Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk has made some pretty crazy wild promises over the years. But let's be honest. I mean, Mary Barra's promises have been insane. She promised that General Motors would have 18 different models of electric car for sale being mass manufactured in 2022. That, well, obviously never happened. General Motors don't even have a single EV being mass manufactured. Now a report has finally emerged. It says that there is immense pressure on General Motors CEO Mary Barra to actually execute because right now their EV factory is in a shambles. I mean, the fire department have been, have been called to their EV factory 11 times over the past few months. And as you know, the EV production at that factory is its basically nothing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Less than four weeks ago, General Motors CEO Mary Barra confidently told investors, as she has many times, uh, that 2024 is a year of execution as the automaker hits reset on production of its newest electric vehicles, relaunches its troubled self-driving subsidiary crews, and fixes new vehicle software glitches that resulted in pausing sales of, yeah, of its most important vehicle, the Chevy Blazer EV. Now, technically, Chevy are also manufacturing the Silverado EV, which is a great pickup truck, but um, in numbers that are so minuscule, the media is not even talking about it. However, in one afternoon, the pressure on Mary Barrett to deliver on all of that has escalated by a factor of 10, said analysts on Wednesday. Now, I've been saying for a long time, how is Mary Barrett getting away with this? She's one of the highest paid CEOs in the world, and it's like performance just, is just irrelevant. I mean, it's crazy because this is a scenario we're really seeing a, a Kodak situation happening. We're seeing a company here that only a few percent of its production worldwide are actually electric cars. I mean, Joe Biden is saying, you did it, Mary, you did it, you've electrified the world, you've actually gotten everyone to make EVs, when it's just nonsensical because General Motors only make a minuscule number of electric cars at the moment. Anyway, last Tuesday, General Motors announced it was losing its longtime head of manufacturing, Gerald Johnson, and its newly hired head of software and services, Mike Abbott. Johnson is retiring. Abbott had to step down due to health issues. But um, some people are saying they believe that uh, he was forced out because GM software uh, is its not going very well. It's not going how it was planned to be going. Both losses could signal a blow to the automaker because General Motors has struggled to manufacture its new EVs and it's had software glitches. Now, the same problem has um, arisen for companies like the Volkswagen Group, and the Volkswagen Group have pivoted, as has Stellantis recently, by manufacturing more of their vehicles in China, uh, basically getting Chinese automakers to manufacture them for them, basically like a kind of like a situation of Magnus Steer in Austria, uh, contract manufacturing under the guise of a joint venture partnership. Wall Street appeared to be accepting of the Johnson and Abbott departures as GM's stock price was up all day. Wednesday, and it closed up 2.65%. Still, the leadership changes in light of GM's incredible problems with EV launches is having, and also having to halt crews. There's been a huge amount of um, problems for GM with their cruise self-driving division when it turned out that actually it wasn't doing what crews were telling everyone uh, that actually human drivers human drivers weren't in the cars, but they were literally having to intervene every couple of miles. Now, General Motors was pretending that its cruise automotive division had vehicles that were just fully self-driving. They were just driving themselves around. They were amazing. But actually, the truth is that humans were, were auditing these vehicles constantly, 24 hours a day, and they were having to intervene every couple of miles. This is not what General Motors told the public, and this is a big issue. In addition, the Chevy Blazer EV, the launch was a complete failure. I mean, reviewers said it was absolutely shocking, one of the worst vehicles they'd ever tested. There was more than 50 problems that were uh, discovered when the, within the first 24 hours of the being reviewed. General Motors paused production completely. Um, 
basically took back all the cars, tried to fix all the problems, and they've only just relaunched the vehicle at a much lower price. In addition to that, some analysts are saying that General Motors will not hit its target to sell 400,000 EVs this year. Um, you know, of course they're not going to. That's just ridiculous that Wall Street would think that was ever going to happen. 400,000 EVs this year. General Motors said that they would outsell Tesla in 2025 with EV production, right? That is just, I've been saying since day one. And I know that a lot of the media said this would happen because it's General Motors. But come on. We all knew that that was the most ridiculous claim. She went on, Mary Barry went on Oprah, on, on Oprah and said, and, and I believe um, uh, Oprah and, and other big talk shows and the hosts were like, are you, are you serious? Are you really going to do this in 2025? Mary Barry's like, yeah, we will. We will sell Tesla. Come on. That was just a straight up lie, really. So basically now investors are saying, Barra is, is not producing. It's talk. It's all talk. It's all talk to try and, do what? Spike GM stock price, right? It's one thing to declare 2024 the year of execution. Let's see if they can actually do it, said Sam Abel Samid, Principal Analyst for Transportation and Mobility at Guy and House Insights in Detroit. If at the end of this year they are able to manufacture and deliver EVs on a consistent basis and not have major software problems on every launch, then okay. But based on what we've seen in the last three years, not just the EVs, but on automotive driving and other areas, it's time to show us and do rather than just talk about it. The need to execute well is a top priority, said David Whiston, auto analyst at Morningstar. But he said, there's more pressure to do it right now because of recent setbacks. That's an understatement, setbacks, uh, like delays at Ultium Cells, GM's battery cell joint venture, and the Blaze EV software mishap. Now, it wasn't just a software mishap. I mean, holy smokes. Imagine if that was a Tesla vehicle. It would have been, Tesla would have been torn to shreds. We would have all said, what a complete failure. Elon Musk is high on, high on drugs. The company's all, everyone there's all doing nothing. What a joke of a car that was when this, I mean, hey, maybe they fixed the problems now. No one actually knows. Uh, but the reality is the Blazer EV was a catastrophic failure beyond comprehension. How could, how could a company the size of General Motors re release a product? They never even tested it clearly before it even went out the door. Anyway, the news about Abbott leaving jeopardizes execution this year a bit too, said Whiston, but hopefully the rest of the team can figure it out and they can hire a new software leader quickly. They're going to need to do this really quickly. They've got a lot of figuring out to do. Dan Ives, Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst at Wedbush Securities, told the Detroit Free Press the departures don't concern him as much as GM's other difficulties with EV launches, software glitches, and actual production. He said GM has to execute this year because time is not on their side anymore. There's massive pressure for Mary because it's all been set up for 2024 to be the execution year the transition to EVs with many models coming out, I've said. There can be no more excuses. Patience is wearing thin among investors. A GM spokesman has declined to comment to all of this. Um, this was A lot of this was published in the Detroit Daily News and GM are just, you know, they're not having a bar, but they're not interested in commenting. Now, Johnson's departure is understandable, right? But apparently now Mary Barry is turning to Tesla why? Well, after navigating a 46-day target of strike by the United Auto Workers Union last fall and working 44 years at General Motors, Johnson, who is 61, is ready to retire. On his LinkedIn page, Johnson said that his retirement may come as a shock to some because of his love for his job, but he wrote the manufacturing team has been and will remain GM's competitive advantage, and I know the team will continue to do what they do best, perform exceed expectations and safely build products our customers love. Now, he may be right when it comes to internal combustion, but when it comes to EVs, that's absolutely not true at all. Johnson will stay on board until the end of the year. However, GM have hired uh, someone from Tesla. Now, Jens Peter Clausen is coming from Tesla to try and basically save General Motors EV hopes. At Tesla, he helped innovate the rapid scaling of EV propulsion systems at Tesla's Gigafactory 1 in Nevada, and apparently played a crucial role in making EVs more accessible. I'm not even sure what EVs more accessible means. But anyway, if you can bring some sort of magic to General Motors, well, yeah, they're going to need it.
big time. Now, analysts are very skeptical about GM's production numbers for this year. They say, GM's goal of selling 400,000 EVs at the end of this year is pretty fanciful. So far, GM hasn't sold 20,000 Ultium EVs in total since they launched the Hummer in late 2020. Four years ago, they haven't even sold 20,000. Anyway, this analyst went on to say, he said, they've absolutely had a lot of issues in their organization, not just in software and manufacturing, but in product planning. I think they've made a lot of mistakes in terms of the types of products they've introduced as part of their EV strategies and how they've designed those products. Now, the biggest problem here, guys, with Ultium EVs, they're too heavy. General Motors has to put big battery packs in them. Big battery packs mean more cost. General Motors doesn't use lithium ion phosphate batteries, so the batteries they do use are expensive. They're expensive to manufacture, and they need more of them. General Motors simply is in an impossible situation. I don't see how they can compete, and I honestly think Mary Barra is on the hot seat here. I'm actually shocked that she's still there. Now, think about this. The CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, the, the greatest investor in history. I don't think there's any doubt about that right? Well, Berkshire Hathaway owned General Motors stock for the last 12 years. 12 years. Well, they just dumped their stock. Now, Berkshire have not dumped a stock in the last three years that I've seen. They've sold percentages of stocks. They might have sold, they've sold down on their BBD position by about 20%. They usually do a, a trimming here or there. They go a bit higher, a bit lower, but they dumped General Motors stock around three months ago. Every single cent it's gone. Now, if Berkshire Hathaway, who have been bullish on General Motors for 12 years, are just completely getting out of their position after losing, they've lost hundreds of millions. They've just gone, you know what? No sunk cost bias. Let's get out of this bad position. If they have completely lost faith in the company, then, well, I'm going to guess probably most others have as well. But let me know what you think. Uh, am I being too scathing? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching.